Hi, I'm Sean from Hello Games, uh, working on No Man's Sky. Let's start by talking about where the idea for this game came from. Um, yeah, I think I could trace it back, like, I could trace the idea back quite long ways, actually. Like, back so far that I don't think it was ever something that I felt like, oh, I'm going to make this game. It's more like, as a kid, I was thinking, I want to play a game like this, you know. Um, I grew up playing, like, Elite, and reading a lot of sci-fi and things like that. It just seemed like sort of an obvious idea that you would want to have a game where you could just go anywhere to have a space game. Anyone who has played any space game has always seen the kind of planets on the skybox. And as a kid, you think, right, I, I'll just go over there and land on it. And you can't, you know, and you think, oh, why is that? And then, you know, slowly you get used to that. I think you're as gamers, we're super used to um, like, I think seeing doors that, you know, you can't open or seeing mountains and know, oh, well, you'll never be able to actually go there or whatever, you know, and we're super used to that. And somebody said to me, no Man's Sky seemed like the game design of like a child, you know, and I think that's kind of true because it, it does sound ridiculous. Like, get into your ship, you fly anywhere, do anything, you can, you know, um, charge about the, the whole galaxy. Um, but that that is the root of it for me, you know. Um, and since we've announced, like, I've just had so many people say, oh, I, you know, like, this is a game I was thinking about when I was a kid or whatever. Um, so that's a really nice feeling, and I think that, that resonance is something I like did not expect and has kind of taken me by surprise, I guess. And having started to develop the game, did you realize why a game like this had never been made? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's, it's a weird thing. Like, I think a, a larger studio would never try and make this game, you know, like it would, it would never get past the kind of pitch stage because it's it's too big and and already you're talking about you know needing teams of hundreds of people to make watchdogs or something like that and then you try and scale that up larger and larger you know to have a whole planet or whatever um you know sure it's a different level of detail to watchdogs or anything like that but just as a concept it seems uh like stupidly big kind of thing and i think that that that's the core of it for me, like why it hasn't been made before maybe, um, is you probably only could convince a small team to do it, you know? And you also have to be quite like sort of stupid to take it on, you know? Like a mixture of maybe clever and stupid. So uh, yeah, maybe there just hasn't been a small team like stupid enough before. <laughs> What was the key from a technology standpoint of being able to do what you guys are doing with a small team? Yeah, I think to, to begin with, we had the idea for the game um, and we'd been talking about it for years. We made uh, some smaller games before this. We made a game called Joe Danger. And while we were working on that, we were always talking about this idea, this kind of science fiction game that we wanted to make. Um, and the idea came first and the idea was imagine being able to you know be a, a pilot and and fly a spaceship and land on a planet and for no one to know what was on that planet to have never no one to have been there before you know um and that's like a cool concept and it's the core of what like sci-fi is to me that kind of emotion so we started there and we were like that's what we want to get across but then it's obvious that we couldn't build that, you know. So the idea came first and then the, the tech kind of came second, which was like, what technology can we make? How do we make this possible? Um, and so we were like really quickly focused on like procedurally generating stuff. Um, that's really been the key to it for us that the using the power of the like computer to build stuff to generate stuff and then then that content problem kind of 
sort of goes away, you know. Can you talk a little about the sheer scope? I know you mentioned it during the uh, presentation, but just give us a sense of how big this world is. Um, yeah, well, we're, we're creating this universe, and it's, uh, it's, it's large, you know. We, we say it's practically kind of infinite, you know, practically limitless. And we, we have this idea that, like, when you're on a planet, you can go and see a mountain on the horizon, and that's a real place, and you can go and climb it. And then when you're on the mountain, you can see a, another planet hanging in the horizon, and that's a real place, and get a ship, and you can go there. Um, and on your way, I guess the thing we always said was like the night sky, the space sky that you see wouldn't be a sky dome. It would be, you know, formed from actual stars, the light of like distant suns. And each one of those would have its own solar system, you know. Um, and that, to begin with, that was where we started. We said like, you want to be able to look up at the night sky and just see, you know, thousands of stars, right? Like, you know, if you look up into our night sky, you can make out about two to 10,000 or whatever. Um, and all of those to be real places. And that's where we started, which is really large scope, but is smaller than where we are now. Um, so we started with that idea, um, which was like, you know, like about two to 10,000 suns. Um, and then we, kind of found what was possible with the technology and we said, well, why have that constraint? Um, so we moved to this system um, where we could randomly generate things from seeds and each planet that's generated kind of has like a, a phone number, a unique identifier, right? And the size of that number was like, to begin with, was like two to the power of 32, right? Which is really big. Um, and it means that like, that number of planets, if you were to discover one every second, it would take you like years to discover them all, like thousands of years kind of thing. Um, and so that seemed like, you know, even more crazily big and about right. We said like, if you discovered one every second, it's going to take thousands of years. That's like going back to, you know, Roman times or something like that and then playing all the way. And then, uh, we had E3 and things like that, and, and the game seemed to be going down well, and we maybe lost the run of ourselves and like hubris or something. We started having this conversation, which was like, yeah, but what if like millions of people play this game, you know? So, you know, and they're all discovering planets as quickly, and, you know, perhaps they'll start seeing similarities or, or you know, ones being you know, landing on ones they've already been discovering, they'll run out of planets and all this kind of thing. So we were like, let's make it bigger. So it's now like two to the power of like 64, right? So that's a really big number. And it's like exponentially big. So, uh, you know, that's like if you were to discover one every second, it would take like 584 billion years or something to discover them all, right? Um, so like we feel like that's probably enough. We're close enough then to just call it infinite, you know, <laughs> like, because, you know, if someone's going to prove us wrong, like, <laughs> that it's not infinite, it's going to, like, not only will I be dead and everyone else will be as well, and our, you know, Earth will be consumed by the sun and the sun will be dead, and, yeah, so I think we're okay to just say, you know, limitless or infinite or something like that. 